anything and everything. Do you ever wonder how to? Do you ever wonder why? About anything and everything. Then Doris is your guy. Anything and everything will open your mind. Anything and everything with Doris. Anything and everything with Doris is online. Remember. Remember. Anything and everything with Doris. You are listening to Anything and Everything with Doris podcast. This episode is brought to you by WYSK Spark Radio, the spark of the South. Listen to hits from the 70s to now. Find it on Live 365 Spark Radio. Hello, everyone. How are you? I hope you had a blessed week. Great to be back. This past weekend, we took the grandchildren to Avery Island. Want to get them out the house and give them something different to do. And Avery Island is one of Louisiana's best kept secrets. If you're going to go to New Orleans for Bourbon Street or maybe a convention, plan to take a day. It's probably 130 miles from New Orleans, but I got to tell you, It's worth every minute that you're driving. Not to mention on the way there, you're going to see some beautiful sights as well. But Avery Island is a salt dome, best known as the source of Tabasco sauce. It's located in Iberia Parish, and it's approximately three miles inland from Vermilion Bay, which opens on to the Gulf of Mexico. There is a lot to do. This is a beautiful, beautiful island. At the longest point, it's about two and a half miles wide, and it's just full of beauty everywhere. There's a factory tour. It's the plant where they make it. You'll get to see from seed to packaging how you get that Tabasco sauce to your store. It's a great, great tour. This tour is uh, self-guided. I'd say give yourself a good two hours for the factory tour. If you really want to read everything and take it in, if you go Monday through Friday, you'll actually see the workers working. You'll see exactly what they do. First time we went, I brought my other grandson. He was about three or four. And when it was during a week, and it was really interesting watching them work. But this time we went on a Saturday. And so, of course, the employees are off. It's still a nice little tour. You're just not actually seeing them work. But they do have some videos that you push the little button and you can see up close. You're just not seeing it in person. They even have a salt dome that they created to show you what how they do it and what it looks like. And it's really, really a nice tour. I don't eat Tabasco. I don't like hot sauces, but I really did enjoy watching and learning how it's created. So even if you don't use it, get over there and take a look at how they produce this stuff. This is really interesting. Now, the factory closes at 4 p.m. And the self-guided tour is like $5.50 a person. If you have groups of 20 or more, you can book a two-hour guided tour, but that's $200, and you'll need to call two weeks ahead of time. You'll be guided through with a nice gentleman, I forgot his name, and he will be able to give you cool stories and stuff that you won't hear on the self-guided tour. I personally enjoy taking my time and doing my own thing, So we always take self-guided tour. You know, you can take your time. You can watch things if they're working or whatever. Nobody's rushing you out of there. And they have, I forget how many points, but you get to see the barrels. You get to see the plants. I mean, there's so much to see. They also have a very interesting museum that you won't want to miss. That's free. I would say between the factory tour and the museum, it would take about two to three hours so that you could take your time, read everything, watch the videos, look, take pictures, give yourself a good two to three hours for the tour in the museum. Then you have the jungle gardens. That's also a self-guided tour. You actually drive around and they have little points where you can stop. 
You could either get out to take pictures or you could follow the trails. But I'm going to tell you right now, for the factory tour, if you're handicapped in a wheelchair, take a walker, that's fine. Pretty level. It's got a lift to go upstairs. Not a big deal. And take pictures. There is a lot of steps. There's a lot of hills. It would be really, really difficult. And then to go see the Buddha, you would have to take the steps down. There's a couple of things you wouldn't be able to do, but from a distance, you'd still be able to enjoy. It's a lot of walking. Of course, you get to choose how much walking you want to do. Of course, I'm wearing my smartwatch. The entire day there, I walked 14,000 steps. And I didn't even walk as much as the grandchildren did. So that tells you that it's a lot of walking. Make sure you wear tennis shoes. Do not wear sandals. Do not wear flip-flops. Do not wear heels. Wear nice, comfortable clothes. I wore a really cute tank top with some capris and my tennis shoes. And of course, bring your sunglasses, your sunscreen, maybe a hat if you wear hats, and mosquito repellent. Now, the time we were there, we didn't have a mosquito issue. But I know in Louisiana, when it starts to get dark and the gardens close at nine. So if you're going to stay the full time, you're going to need some mosquito repellent for the end of the day. So I always carry it with me anyway. Now that tour is $8 a person for 12 and up and $5 for five to 12. And they do offer senior discounts and military discounts. I think my husband got to pay $4.95 instead of the $5.50 and $7.20 instead of the $8 because he's a military vet. I want to warn you, the summer heat in Louisiana is really, really extreme. If the heat really bothers you a whole lot and you can't handle it, Springtime would be a good time to go if you want to see all the blooming flowers. And fall's really beautiful too. You just don't have the spring blooms. But any time I've ever gone there, it's been beautiful. The only time I would stay away is if it had rained because I could imagine it's pretty muddy. I would go on an overcast day maybe, but not a rainy day, not a day that is after a good rain, you know, if it rained, give it a few days, let it dry out. They also have nice places that you can picnic along the way. Now, what we did was we brought a nice chest and we had ham and drinks and lots of water. And they have a picnic site right by the Southern Live Oaks. That's going to be number one that you see. Well, over there, they have... On both sides of the road, they have benches. For me, that would be the perfect place because it's pretty shady and it's right next to a little gift shop and it has a bathroom. And I like to wash my hands before and after my meals. Now, along the way, they have some picnic sites also, but there's no bathroom. So you'd need baby wipes. And if you got to go to the bathroom, you're going to have to go all the way back to number one. If you don't want a picnic, they have a restaurant there too. So I haven't eaten there because I get all my Cajun cooking at home. If you plan on eating at their restaurant, I would still suggest you bring a cooler or some type of ice chest and bring lots of water or whatever you want to drink. Think of it this way. It's a self-guided tour and it's really big. It's 15 sites you can go to, but you can take your time with them. There's no time frame. They don't say you have an hour, two hours. You just have to be there as long as you want, as long as you leave by 9 p.m. with the Jungle Gardens. Now, the plant closes at 4, but Jungle Gardens stays open till 9. So some people might like going in the morning. I think it all opens at 9. And they want to be out by 12 or 1 because that's when the hottest part of the day starts coming, right? But then some people might not want to get up early on a day off or whatever. They might come at 2. Now, that's actually what we did. This time we went sort of on last minute. We decided at 10 o'clock, when you know what, when we finish the yard, we'll take the kids to Avery Island. So by the time we finished the yard, got ourselves dressed and got there, it was almost 2 o'clock. 
So we only had two hours to spend at the factory, so we did that first. When we were done with that, we stopped at stop number one in Jungle Gardens and we had our little picnic and we ate and then we went around our way. So I think we were eating about four-ish. Then we had from four to nine the Jungle Gardens tour, which we were out of there by 630, I think. And that was taking our time. If you're planning to do the factory tour, try to get there about one or two so that you can give yourself plenty of time to absorb all the stuff in the factory. Because you can do the museum after the factory as well. So you could do the factory, then do the museum, and then go to the gardens. The museum's right where you buy the tickets. So we bought our tickets, we went to the museum, and then we went to the factory, since they were going to be closing. And then we went and did our picnic around four-ish, By 6.30, we were done with the gardens. So make sure you have plenty to drink. Like I said, at at stop number one, they have the little store. So if you don't bring anything to drink and you get thirsty, you can always turn around and go to the store. But I always like to bring my own drink, lots of ice, stuff like that. So it's just a little tip. You're allowed to do that. Just make sure you keep all the trash in the car and then when you see the garbage can on your way out or whatever throw it away there there's a rule my dad taught me because we used to camp a lot and he always said when it comes to nature always leave it better than you found it and so that's what we do and it's such a beautiful place and it's so well maintained why would you want to leave anything behind so i'm going to briefly give you the 15 stops of what you're going to see. There's going to be, number one would be Southern Live Oaks. That's the prominent trees in the gardens. That's where you can sit down under those beautiful trees and have a nice little picnic. Number two is Bayou P.T. Ons Marsh Trail. And that leads to the Vermilion Bay, which eventually, like I said earlier, it goes into the Gulf of Mexico. You can take a walk along the Marsh Trail And you'll be able to see the Louisiana bald cypress trees. It's really beautiful. Number three is the alligators. It's a lagoon and it has alligators and turtles and all kinds of wildlife. Now, I want to warn you, there's nothing in this area that's pinned. It all roams free. So beware, I don't care where you are in the gardens, always be aware that something could be around you, like an alligator, maybe a bear. Now, I've never seen a bear, but I did see a sign that said, don't feed the bears. So apparently they're around somewhere. And then there's alligators. Of course, you're in Louisiana. Okay, so beware and don't approach them and don't ever feed them. Ever. Number four is the boathouse, which is a structure that was built by Mr. McKinney. I think his friend Charles Willis Ward did, helped him as well. They traveled the coastal states in a 70 foot luxury motorboat of their time. Then number five is the Venetian Gardens, which he planned and excavated these man made lagoons after the water gardens of Venice. The number six is the Cleveland Oak. Now, this tree is a live oak, and he was named for Grover Cleveland. Cleveland actually visited this tree, and they say that he even hugged it, which is why it was named after him. And the tree is about 300 years old or so. And number seven is the Holly Arch. That's gorgeous. You can drive through it. It's just a row of holly shrubs planted from the 1920s, and it's beautiful. And number eight is the Buddha. Now, the Buddha was a gift to Mr. McCombe in 1936. It was created for the Shanfa Temple during the reign of Emperor Song some 900 years ago. And that statue overlooks a picturesque lagoon. That is a must-see. Like, my grandson wanted to take a picture. He was like, Graham, I want you to take a picture of me right here. It's really a beautiful sight. And then number nine is the Wisteria Arch. Its fragrance is out of this world. It's colorful. You'll never forget it. It was actually introduced into New Orleans around 1875. 
And number 10 is the Palm Garden. That happens to be an old mining sand pit that evolved into a shady walk area. You can see the Pindo Jelly Palm centered in a garden that sits on a hill surrounded by the Sago Palms. It really, really is beautiful too. And then you got number 11. That is Bird City. Now what happened was... Mr. McKinney built this aviary over a hundred years ago because some of the birds were getting endangered. So he started a spot and he, he took some in and he raised them and then they moved on, right? But guess what? They came back and they brought more. They realized this was a safe place for them. And now that is the best place to go see a whole lot of beautiful, beautiful birds and Both times I've been there, at different times of the year, it has been full of birds. Number 12 is the timber bamboo, which was also imported from China and grows a foot or more a day and is 65 days fully grown. Can you believe that? A foot a day and within two months, it's fully grown. Amazing. Now, site number 13 is his home, but it's closed to the public. So you can only see it from the outside. And when you look at it, I just like picturing him and his family being raised there. I was like, wow, you can tell it was a mansion of its time. You know, it's got to be gorgeous on the inside if they cap it up. And then number 14 is the sunken garden. And what this represented was the attempt to slow the rush of water from the hills of Avery Island during rain events. It also created a quiet garden. I could sit there all day. It was really beautiful. And in number 15 are the camellias. Jungle Gardens is actually a home to one of the largest collection of camellias in the nation. Now, this time when we went, they weren't in bloom. But if you go in the spring when it's fully bloomed, just imagine the smell and the sight you would see. So that's the 15 spots and that's what you would see. There's no way I could put into words how beautiful it is. It really is amazing. That is two other things that they offer that I haven't checked out. They have a cooking class. And what you do is you learn the secrets to creating hot and spicy Louisiana inspired cuisine right where Tabasco sauce is made. And you get a four course meal included in that. And that's about $50. And then they have the Tabasco Culinary Tour. What you do there is you get samples of the Cajun cuisine through a guided excursion through Acadiana on a Tabasco Culinary Tour. I haven't done these two because I am blessed enough to be married to a Cajun man. So I get all of my Cajun food anytime I want. And they had a country store right by the museum. It's in between the restaurant and the museum, and that's in the front where you buy the tickets. This time when we went, believe it or not, they were giving out samples of ice cream with the Tabasco sauce flavor. Of course, I'm not going to try it because I don't like Tabasco sauce, but my two grandsons did. They actually liked it. They said it really wasn't that bad. So depending on what they're handing out that day, you can get some nice little samples over there. So all I can tell you, when you come to Louisiana, if you can spend a day, plan a whole day, and go see Avery Island, I'm going to tell you it was well worth it. Get to spend as much time as you want enjoy the beauty, take the pictures, just soak it all in, but just dress comfortably, plan to walk, and prepare for the heat. Bring lots of water and sunscreen. And if you're going to stay late, mosquito repellent is a good idea as well. Now, watch out for the wildlife because it roams free. All right, respect it, stay away from it, enjoy it from a distance, and you'll have a safe, pleasant time. It really is an amazing place to visit, and everyone there is always friendly. And that's our show. Thanks for listening, and until we meet again, enjoy every day to its fullest. God bless. For comments or questions, you can reach us by email at yappy at post.com. 
Also, check us out on Twitter at Dorisi and our Facebook pages at Yappy Studio or Louisiana Entertainment Association. Anything and Everything with Doris is produced by Your Own Production Incorporated and comes out every week. So come on back and feel free to add us to your favorite RSS feed, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Pod, and our favorite, Podbean. All links are found in our show notes below. Thank you.